Now that we've got everything sandblasted and cleaned up, I went ahead and hit all of the gasket surfaces with a uh, with my die grinder with a real soft scotch bright wheel on it just to make sure we got off all the old gasket material and just to condition this surface so it'll it'll seal for us. Now when you do something like that, especially on aluminum, you want to be really careful with it so you don't uh, distort the surface. On this one, this head's already kind of messed up, so I was really careful. There is still a little bit of residue on here, but I figured I'll just clean that up by hand just so I don't, don't mess up this ceiling surface. The next thing I want to try to accomplish here is to get these cylinders cleaned up. We are putting new rings in this, and we want them to uh, break in nicely, so I want to clean up the walls, make sure everything's nice and smooth, put some nice crosshatch in there, and really just uh, get it all set to go. To do that, I went to my local auto parts store and rented a, uh, a cylinder hone. Basically, this is just a little, little spring-loaded cutter with some, some stones on it, and that's going to smooth out the wall. These things aren't great, but it's better than nothing. This one is in uh, pretty sorry shape. I guess that's what you get for going to a tool rental place. But since I don't own one of these, I didn't want to go and buy one for what potentially could be a one-off deal, so I figure the rental is the better way to go. It's a pretty simple setup here. All we have to do is uh, put some oil in the bore. I'm just going to use WD-40 to help act as a cleaner and a lubricant. And uh, we just run it through with our drill and just make sure you move in and out to get a crosshatch. Really pretty, pretty straightforward. I'm just going to go ahead and get things set up here and start cutting. Well, that went okay. The cylinders are actually a lot worse than I thought they were. I knew there was some, some issues in there with some past rust, but I didn't think they were worn quite as much as they are. There's a, a bit of a ridge up here in the top. I just couldn't feel it when it was all dirty. And now that we've got everything kind of honed, it's, it's okay. I probably could go a little bit further, get a little bit more crosshatch in here, but I just don't want to make the cylinders any bigger than they actually are. So. We're just going to leave it. So I'm just going to move this stuff off to the side. Let me grab the crank and the rods and let's see what we can do to fix those up. All right, so I got the crank here and uh, this crankshaft is in okay shape. Like I said, this journal here actually looks really good. I probably could just leave that go. And so we'll do a quick polish on that one and, and call it good. This one here, however, uh, this is the one that was coupled to the bad rod has a little bit of scoring on it, but for the most part, it feels okay. There's a couple spots I can feel with my fingernail. So we're gonna go ahead and polish this one up too. We'll just spend a little more time on it. Really, all I wanna do is make things smooth. As far as polishing this up, uh, I'm just gonna use the old shoestring trick. What we'll do is I'm just gonna clamp this to my bench here. I've got some 2000 grit sandpaper. We're gonna try that and see how that works. We're going to wrap that around the journal and then I'm just going to take an old shoestring and wrap that around the sandpaper and then with a sawing motion uh, it'll polish things up and hopefully keep it fairly concentric. All right, so here it is clamped to the work surface and you can see I just used a soft jaw clamp, made sure it was nice and stable and now we can go ahead and move on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my 
WD-40 here, just give it a little spray. We do want this wet. Put a little bit on the sandpaper. And now I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this around the journal like so. Now we'll take our, our shoelace. You want to make sure you use a flat style shoelace for this. We'll wrap that around a couple of times here. And now, just using a sawing motion here, we'll just run this around a couple of times. And let's see how that looks. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. That is done. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, this main while it's sticking out here and just get that out of the way. And then we'll just repeat on the, on the last two and we should be all set to go. Well, there we are. There it is, all taken care of. This guy here, which was the journal that was in good shape, actually turned out real nice. Just has a smooth, silky clean finish. That one's ready to go. This guy here that had the bad rod um, has some scoring or some kind of weird pitting going on in there. But for the most part, when I run my fingernail and my fingers across this, it feels fine. So I'm just going to send it. We're going to live with it. It's going to be perfect. Now the mains, again, they polished up okay. They do show some, some signs of wear, but they just ride in bronze bushings and we're just going to, again, I'm just going to live with it. Truth be told, I probably could have just cleaned this and put it back together and it would have been just fine. The compressor was actually running as is, so this is probably... Uh, more than adequate for what we're trying to accomplish. But any little bit that I can do to make this work better, I'm gonna go for. Now, just so you know, this technique can be applied in a lot of different places. In fact, I did this to the crankshaft on my 55 Chevy when I put that together. And some of the journals were, were actually worse than this. All I did was clean them up, uh, threw some new bearings in it, and that car now has 10,000 miles on it and it's running like a top. So. You know, it's super effective. You know, the reason for the shoelace is it helps keep things round. If you just try to strap it, you run the risk of, of throwing things out around. So, crank is done. Let's move on to the rods. This is actually probably the worst part of this whole build. So, what we're gonna do here first is I'm just gonna mic the journals on the crank and see what sizes we're dealing with there. Then we'll go ahead and put the rods together and mic the ends on those and see uh, see just how much clearance we have here. So here's my, uh, my good journal. Looks like we've got feels good. Looks like we're one inch, 123 thousandths ish. It's a little tiny bit over that, but we'll call it one, 123. And now we'll measure the bad one. And I imagine this will probably give me a similar reading. And that is, yeah, it's the same thing. So it's one inch, 123. So now we know what's going on with those. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the better of the two rods here. I'm just gonna assemble this and we'll see what we got. All right, so on the rod here, I've just gone ahead and I've put the cap on there. I've snugged things up a little bit. And these don't have any kind of uh, alignment marks. So they just self-align around the journal. So I got it lined up as, as good as I can by hand here. And now I'm just gonna use a telescoping gauge here. We don't need to be super accurate, so I'm not gonna be digging out anything more accurate than this. And we're just gonna 
kind of reach in here, find a happy, happy position. That'll be that right there. And let's just mic this and see what this comes up with. Looks like that comes up to 1, 124. So actually, it's not that bad. I'm just going to measure this again, make sure I get an accurate read on this. Yeah, it's 1 inch, 124. So it's just a just a hair bigger. I would have actually expected there to be a lot more clearance than that. So I'm going to go ahead and just slap this on the crank and see what things feel like. All right, so with things assembled here, we can kind of kind of get a feel for this and uh, you know what that's pretty darn tight moves free I think this is good enough we're gonna let that one go all right well here is our bad one and uh, you know the more I look at it the worse it looks but I think uh, again it's just an air compressor so I think it's gonna be just fine I've actually had small engines, lawnmower engines in part, uh, that were running just fine, and the rods were way worse than this. So I'm really not too worried about it. But let's just uh, let's just measure things up and see how bad it actually is. So same procedure. I'm just going to get this all put together. I'll get it mic'd up, and we'll uh, we'll see what it looks like. All right, so I've got things measured up here in what was probably the loosest position I could find. And let's just see where we are. And it is, it is 1, 126. So we're talking three thousandths larger here. So it's uh, not great, but it's not terrible. The issue is all the scoring that's going on in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop this apart and... Uh, I'll show you what we're going to try to do here to tighten things up a little bit. All right, are you ready for this? So I've uh, got some things prepped here, and I think I've figured out what it is I'm going to try to do to fix this up. Now, the issue again is the fact that the, the hole size in this rod is larger than we want, and the surface is all scored up. And really what we want to do is we want to shrink the hole diameter and we want to clean up this surface. And so uh, we're going to try something really questionable here and I think we're going to have good results. So here's what I've got. I've got a nice big file, smooth cut, and I'm going to use that to file the rod cap here and then that's going to actually shrink the hole diameter. And then I've got a small piece of aluminum here, a scrap chunk of aluminum that I just turned a small end on it that'll fit in my drill. We're going to wrap some sandpaper on there and we're going to use that to resize the end of this rod. So uh, no professional aspects here. So let's, uh, let's start with this cap here and I'm just going to simply I just want to file this thing so it's nice and flat and a little bit smaller in diameter. All right, so I went ahead and just filed this down until almost all of the machining marks were gone. Uh, the rod did look like this one. If you look closely here, you can see all of these machining marks that are in the surface that's just from the original manufacturer and so I've just gone and filed all those down until it was nice and smooth and before I go any further I'm just gonna go ahead and put the rod together I'm gonna to remeasure it and hopefully we'll get this to be I don't know maybe two or three thousands undersized and then we can go into the refitting process so I'm just gonna go ahead and slap this together I'll get it remeasured and then I'll, I'll let you know what it turns out to be all right, well after our first round of filing, I managed to get this down to one inch and uh, 122 thousandths it looks like. Let me just double check that. Yeah, 
So we are now uh, one thousandths undersized from the crank journal. So we're, we're moving right along. I'm going to do a little bit more filing on this. Like I said, I want to get it down. I want to get it down about three thousandths undersized. And then we'll go ahead and I'll show, I'll show you how we're going to polish this up. All right, so after a little bit more filing here and a couple of double checks, uh, let's just see where we ended up. And we are at one inch and 119 thousandths. So I'm now four thousandths undersized, which is, uh, should be good for what we're going to do. So now for the technique. So before we move on to the next step here, I do want to stop and mention that this is not at all the correct thing to do. It has its technique based on the correct thing, but this is not it. You just have to keep in mind, this is a $40 air compressor. All I want to do is uh, keep it alive. So with that in mind, let me show you what we're doing. All right, so here's how this is going to work. I've got my little aluminum mandrel that I made. Uh, it's just one inch aluminum. It just fits inside the rod and we're going to uh, tape this on here. I do want to have this actually fit the rod pretty closely. So I'm just going to take some, some paper towel here, wrap that on here. It's going to give it a bit of a cushion. And we'll just get that to the point where the paper towel just fits. It should be right about there. And now I'm just going to take some masking tape. And I'm going to tape my sandpaper on here. All right, well, after a few adjustments here of making sure I got the right amount of paper towel and sandpaper, I now have it so it has a fairly snug fit. Uh, it's not perfectly tight. We don't want it to be super tight. Uh, and it is going to shrink a little bit once we get started here. So now I'm going to get some WD-40 inside of here. We'll get our sandpaper inserted. Hook up our drill. And now we'll just resize this sucker. It's just aluminum, so it's going to go pretty quick here. So we'll just clean out the rod end here. Let's give that a quick measure, see if we actually did anything. Now at this point I'm actually measuring what's going to be the smallest diameter because we do need it to fit the fit the crank. And here we're at one one inch, one hundred and twenty-one thousandths. So you can see that we we increased it pretty rapidly there. Uh, you know we were at nineteen, now we're at twenty-one, so two thousandths came off real quick. We do want to get this up to uh, twenty-three, so I'm going to go ahead and knock a little bit more off. Well, all right, there we are. We've got it to uh, just about 123. And uh, now I'm just going to do a quick polish on this. I want to just get rid of these 400 marks. So I'm going to go back to this 2000 grit paper I have and just give it a quick polish. So let me, uh, let me polish this up a little bit and I'll show you what we ended up with. All right, well, here we go. There is our final finish and uh, hopefully you can see that okay. The rod cap looks pretty decent. There's still some grooves in it. The rod itself still has some pretty deep grooves in it, but we're not going to go any further than that. I don't want to run the risk of, you know, really screwing things up. And again, this thing's going to work just fine. As long as there's no crap in there that's going to get caught up and cause more problems, it'll be just fine. The ultimate test though, let's put it on the crank and see how things actually fit. All right, well, there we are. It's in place, and there is just a little bit of play in there, just like we want. Look at that. Look at how nicely that thing swings. 
So that should be uh, should be a whole lot better than it was. Now I can't stress enough that uh, what I just did is not recommended. That was uh, about as sketchy as sketching gets. It worked, but I got lucky. If you attempt this on your own stuff, uh, I would be prepared to potentially have to throw it away. So with that said, there's one more thing I do want to do, and that is this edge here on the rod cap uh, and on the rod uh, got pretty sharp during this process. So I just want to ease that edge a little bit. So I just got a really small, super fine file. I'm just going to lay that on this edge here and just just knock that surface off. Hopefully you can see this here. I just don't want a sharp corner there that could potentially cause a burr that will get pulled out. So we'll just do that on, on all of these sharp corners that we just created. Let me do Let me do this one here. So there we go. Just easing that a little bit just to make sure we don't have any uh, any issues. And now I'm going to call this uh, I'm going to call this done. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull these rings off now because we're not going to be using those. All right, so I got the rings off. We're just going to set those aside. Those are going to get tossed here. And now, really, all we have to do is get the pistons and the rods cleaned up here. You've probably noticed I haven't taken the piston off of the rod, and that's because they've got these little expansion plugs that go in here to hold the pin in place. And I don't want to have to try to refit any of that. So we're just leaving it together. I'm going to clean this, and immediately I'm going to throw some oil on the pin just to make sure that that's good. And we're going to call the pistons and rods done. So let me, uh, let me clean up this mess, and I've got one more thing I want to try to accomplish today. All right, so the last thing I want to try to repair here today, um, and it's probably not necessary, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway, and that is the seats on the head for the reed valves. They look to be okay, but I want to make sure they have the best chance of sealing up. Uh, both the intake and the exhaust side. So what I've done here is I've just taken a, another scrap piece of steel that I had laying around and I machined the end of it perfectly flat and then uh, glued on a piece of 400 grit sandpaper and that will just kind of slip right down here on the seat and now if I just keep a nice even pressure on it while I rotate this that will sand the seat and get it flat. So what I'm going to do now is just go around uh, there's actually six seats in this head and we'll just give it a a little polish here and you can see how it's it's hitting most of the way around it's not perfectly even so we'll just go ahead and clean these things up a little bit I'll get all those taken care of and then uh, we should be in real good shape All right, well there we are. We've got it uh, wrapped up as far as we're gonna go here. Now if you take a look, um, you can see that the, the seat's polished up pretty nicely here. This seat here has got some rings in it, but I'm not too worried about that because at least it's nice and level. The rings are, uh, look like they're just machining mistakes from when it was manufactured. So if it's lived this long with them, they can live now. But now they're all nice and flat and should seal up just fine. Once I got finished with all of them, uh, my sandpaper was good and worn out. So I just went through and hit them all again and that kind of polished it up a little bit. And that's as far as I need to go. Was this step necessary? Probably not. This compressor worked, it pressurized, it got that crappy tank all the way up to 120 pounds. So I'm sure it was just fine. But since we're doing all this other work, we might as well make it as nice as possible. And uh, truthfully, having nice work done here kind of makes up for the crappy work we just did on that rod. Now we're ready to, to move on. We do still need to fix the holes for this reed valve here because they were stripped out. Uh, but I've decided to wait until I actually get the parts in. And then uh, we'll look at the screws and we'll determine whether or not we can just uh, 
put an oversized screw in there or if I do have to repair the thread. So that'll just have to wait until later. Well, there we are. Everything is all cleaned up and ready to go. I'm pretty happy with how things have turned out here. That rod, uh, again, pretty sketchy, but I think it's going to be just fine. All it's got to do is work. So we'll live with that. Uh, everything else, you know, the cylinder turned out okay. Not great, but okay. So I'm happy with that. And uh, head's good to go, and the block is good to go. So really, we're in real good shape. Now my kit to rebuild this is not here yet, and I just checked the tracking and it's going to be another couple of days. So I think this is probably a good spot to cut it off. So on the next part we'll go ahead and get everything reassembled and get things working. We'll get the uh, old motor off of the existing tank, we'll get the conversion figured out, and uh, hopefully in another week we'll have a good, good working air compressor. Anyway, that's all I got for today. So until the next one, I'll just see you around.